Okay. So it's a day or two before Dorian, August 31st, 2019. Everyone else is worried about the hurricane that's coming towards Florida and possibly going up further north. And I'm getting ready to do a an acrylic pour on the new tabletops that we're making into TV stands. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a granite look and it's going to be a base of half black that has Floetrol in it and half bare paint that has Floetrol and GAC 800 and a little bit of glue and this is a house paint and I'm going to be doing it in a crisscross banner type style and then I have mixed in my pour cup I have mixed Mars Black, Gold, a little bit of silver, some bronze, some more of the bare paint, and metallic copper. A little splash of white as well. So that's what you're looking at in here. And it looks like it's about 10 ounces of paint. Now it doesn't seem like that's going to be enough, but for a granite pour, I really don't want to overwhelm it. I want to spread it out a little bit more. And I will be using the OXO omelet knife to mix the black, or to spread the black and the beige bear paint as a base coat. Now all I'm going to do is take this, and you won't be able to see it because the tabletop is already black. And I've put down as much as I can here, there's just a drizzle left, so I'll pour that out. And I'll uh, see if I can get a little bit more of it out of here because I'm not going to be able to use it after that. So I might as well use it on this one. And put that on one side. And then I'm going to go over to the other side. And I'm going to put down a base of the bare house paint on the other side. I'm not going to mix them together. It's going to be kind of like a... Oh, kind of marbly. Okay, and this is a little fluid, so hopefully it won't all run off. But you'll be able to see me pour in a moment. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to not knock my pour paints over, just move those out of the way, and spread out the base coat so the pour colors have somewhere to move. Now this time I got smart and I put it on a turntable. So hopefully I won't hit any paints on the way. And get this spread out. And as you can see, it makes a nice, this omelet knife is so, makes it so easy to move the paint around. I'm trying to use just one side so I can do the black side and not have them get muddy. So what I'm doing is just being a little bit, it's a little weird, but it's not too bad. Okay, now that's the beige side. Now I'm going to go over to the black side. You won't be able to see too much of this, but you might be able to tell that there's paint moving around on the tabletop. Do not hit my pour cup. And all I did was mixed my paints with Floetrol, GAC 800, and then the acrylic paints. Now I've covered this pretty much across the entire tabletop, so it's part black, part beige, and hopefully I didn't miss any spots because it's a black background. And there we go. I'll get this part off over here, and if they melt a little bit, it's okay, because I have both of these colors in the pour cup that you see right here. Now in here, all I did was pour each color in individually, and what I'm going to try to do is start at one end and then do larger ribbons, nice gentle ribbons this time, and then follow back around because the colors will get darker again, and then come back around to the black side, get the colors out. I see I got some cells forming, which is fantastic. And I've got some paint going off the edge already, and I didn't want that to happen, but it's okay. What I'm going to take and see if I can scoop out the last of the color so I have some of these brighter colors on the dark side. 
go back in there again and I'm kind of doing like you would do if you were making a cake. <laughs> and see if I can get some of these colors there now. This looks good so far. I'm going to take that paint off there, take some of the black, and put it where it's a little light on the other side. Now I still have the other side, still have on the other side of the turntable here, I still have other colors. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to make a smear with the black on the black side of this. And then I'm going to go on the light side, take some of these colors through, and down the center, just like granite would be, it would be a movement of rock color. And hopefully I'm not getting too much of this all over the place. And the little bubbles that are forming, or it, what looks like little bubbles, are cells. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to take some black and I'm going to make a deliberate dark vein line through and try not to touch that too much so it gives it some definition. I'm trying to talk a little bit louder than I have in the past so you could hear me. I have a little fan running because it's warm in Florida and I don't want to do it when I'm warm. So let's see if I can move this just a little bit and not knock, knock over a cup has some leftover paint in it and see if I can get just a little bit more out of this black where it's way, way, way too light. It's way too light over here because I'm going to stretch it, but I don't want to stretch too far. don't want to stretch too much, but I want that black color to show through as if it was a vein of stone. And now, Normally, the next thing you would do is use your torch before you start tilting. Now, there may be a couple different ways of doing that, but let's see if I can get some of the bubbles up before I move it around a little bit. And I'm not cooking the paint. I turned down my uh, flame a little bit so, it wouldn't, so I wouldn't get too, too much going on there. But I'll see if I can tilt it off a little bit and get the colors to blend. Now, this looks a little different than the ones that I did before. Thank God I didn't drop that napkin in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and tilt it slightly. I have it on the turntable this time to try to save my back just a little bit. But what I'm going to try to do is very slowly tilt that. Now I'm not loving what's going on in here. I'm not sure what what that is. So I'm going to take a smaller little scoop rather than the big spatula and I'm just going to run it through here. Pull that through so the colors you can see here on the scoop will go through. I can tell that I have no colors there. But I'm going to see if I can put a little bit more. I don't have any black there. I'm going to try to scoop out some black here and get it through this area. Come on. Come on out. You can do it. I'm going to drizzle a little bit here of the black to tone down that one spot. Now, normally in a acrylic pour, this might be considered cheating, but I really don't care. This is where it's more important for it to look like the rock is continuing. And so far, so good. So I'll take the little cup again, and I'm going to turn this around so I don't have to break my back. And I'm going to pull it. Whatever colors come off here, I can actually scoop back up, too. So this is doubly useful. S serves two purposes. Now this vein that didn't continue, I'm going to continue off. Now here where we have nothing going on in this corner, before I stretch it, I'm going to encourage the darker colors to come over, and then 
I'm going to scoop whatever colors I can from the side because it's already going off the side. You can't really tell because it's a black background, but it is coming off the side. And I like that. So, again, we're going to take and we're going to go through and make it a wider band of black and hopefully not get rid of all of the solid color black. And if I do, it doesn't really matter because the colors are bold enough to stand on their own. With that being said, I'm going to see if I have, I have some sequin black. What I'm going to do is put a deliberate stream again down the center and fill it in just a little bit more and go down this way too. Got a little bit of a schmutz here that I don't want to come out on the on the painting. Give it a quick shake and I usually keep a couple of um, marbles in my paint. And now I'm going to take a very light sweep through here so the black is dominant. It's a, one of my color choices that I prefer. may not be everybody's preference, but it certainly is mine. So since I'm doing this one pretty much for me, for us, now what I'm going to do is just tilt it a little more. Try not to get too much of it on the back side. So let me get a paper towel here real quick and wipe my gloves off. And then tilt it just towards me. That's still a little too light on this side for my for my case. So I'm just gonna put a band in there. And now I'm going to tilt it towards me so I can pull some of this color back towards, you won't see it on the camera maybe, but you should. It's, you want to give it a little bit of a twist and then let it rest. Take it around the side. And what's happening here is I'm getting it towards the end of my work surface and I didn't want it to go off on the table. So as much as this is going to look a little bizarre when you're watching it, it'll make sense if it would make sense if you were here. So I'm going to pull that black color. And again this looks a little too little too muddy. So hopefully that will stay thick and black stripes. And now I'm going to pull it towards me again so we don't lose that vein look that I'm going for there. Get rid of a little bit of the beige. It's a little too much beige there. And that's looking pretty good. A little lighter than I expected, but that's okay. Not everything has to be completely dark. It's on a dark background, so it's a little bit easier to work with more color. This is not moving on this side, though. And it's probably because of this right there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to help it just a little bit. You see this big vein of beige? I'm not going to fight it. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to go with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it back and let that... If I tilt it the other, in the other direction, if I tilt it like in that direction, you'll see that the vein will open up again, that beige vein will open up again on my end. And what it'll give is a little more, a little bit easier to see. I'm not sure. I'll bring it back this way again. Boy, these are, these are heavy tops. And what happens when you have a heavy top is your hand wants to stop holding it. And it ends up no, that's pretty good. I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy with that. It has a definite, definite granite look to it. In fact, I may give this a little bit of a shot of 
the bear's paint here so it has more of a vein on this side that didn't quite have. So I'm going to just scoop it in there. Not scoop, but just pour it on there. Take my other little scoop over here that is clean and now just drag it back softly. And voila. So this is one that's a little bit lighter in color. I'm not sure what the back's going to look like, but the sides are getting pretty well covered. And so is the tabletop. So I'm running it along with my fingers along the side so it has color. And Ken should be coming over here any minute now to tell me to stop stretching it. <laughs> and that'll be good because that's where all of us want to keep going with these with these pores and then it ends up being overdone. So I'm going to give it a second. I'm going to torch it again. My torch looks like it has 50 colors on it. And hopefully it'll burst any other bubbles that are hanging out. Go from one side very lightly. Yeah, there we go. That's a little better. Probably has a lot more color than most people are used to, but, and hopefully this was recording. It is. For some reason, everybody stays under 18 minutes, and so far I've been able to do that too. So, hopefully, I'm going to take the spatula now. I'm just going to run along the bottom so the paint stops pulling. Because when paint is on the side, it ends up pulling more paint from the top. And I really don't want to do that. Now the color tones that I'm using, I've actually made, oh there's a nice little pop of some copper in there. I should put a drop or two more of it. Just a little touch. Little tiny touch. And if it comes out nice, it'll be it'll be good. Sometimes you get blob. Oh, there you go. Just a little blob. No, no problem. Just a small blob. There we go. Because that looks like a copper vein in, and all I'm doing is enhancing now. I shouldn't really be doing too much of this because this is where you start getting into trouble when you try to do something you didn't want to do. But it's that pop of color that will carry your eye around the whole thing. So, there you have it. It is a granite pour by Angela Calabrese. This is creatively done. Calling this one a wrap. And we're almost we're almost done taping. So Ken's gonna walk in and he knows I'm taping or recording or whatever I'm supposed to say because I'm older than dirt. And um, hopefully if I turn this off with my finger, I won't ruin my phone. So Good talking to you. This is Angela with Creatively Done.